So today we're going to talk about how to find your best market opportunities. Now market opportunities are the lift that brings you sailing and soaring to success in your business. You can have the most distinct value in the world, but if you don't bring it to the right markets, you won't be successful. And by the way, having great distinct value and trying to take it to every market you see isn't a recipe for success either. Throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks is not the way to grow your business. You grow your business by defining distinct value and then focusing on providing that value to markets that need it to solve a problem or to make their lives better. Now let's talk right now about how you can define the best market opportunities for your success. Let's take a look. So first of all, let's talk about horizons of opportunity. Opportunity is all around us. We have 360 degrees of opportunity, but just because it's an opportunity doesn't mean it's good for us and our business. Some opportunities are positive opportunities. Some are the way that we will crash and burn. We have to get really smart about identifying the difference between those. Some opportunities are leveraged by what we do today. Some take us in a totally different direction and may not be our best source of market lift. Above all, we have to realize that markets and opportunities are dynamic. And we have to be dynamic too. Just because it was a great opportunity yesterday doesn't mean it's a great opportunity today. And just because it wasn't an opportunity yesterday doesn't mean that it might not be our best opportunity for growth right now. Everything changes and we have to be ready to do that too, especially when it comes to our markets. So I divide up the horizon into these categories of opportunities. We have current markets, we have markets that are complementary to our current markets, we have emerging markets, those new rocket ships that take off or that may come in slowly and then grow quickly. We have left and right opportunities, which mean they cause us, we have to make a really major adjustment in order to address them. And then we have 2020 opportunities, which are what I call hindsight opportunities because, you know, in hindsight, God, I wish I'd have done that. Well, maybe not. The key is to focus on your best markets, not every opportunity you see out there. That is a key success to failure. You will fail if you focus on trying to hit too much. So first let's talk about your current markets because you need to know where you're successful today before you can plan for success tomorrow. Current markets should be your easiest segments to identify. They are your sources of profit today, revenue and profit. They come in the form of your customers, you may have prospects in those markets, your partners and your allies that sell for you may have current markets that you address. These are the markets that you know to be yours. Now, how do you identify your current markets? Well, first of all, look at the real results. Don't just look at that top line revenue. Look at bottom line profitability. You may have a really great current market, but if you're losing money on every sale you make, it's really not a great opportunity, now is it? <laughs> Ask yourself, who really buys my product or service. Not who I'm targeting and want to buy. Who buys? If someone isn't buying your product today, they are not a current market. I don't care how much you want it to be or wish it to be. Once you really look at who buys your products, now evaluate all those current markets that you thought you had that really don't make the grade because they're not buying from you. Maybe there isn't an opportunity there at all, or maybe your value isn't a good match and with a slight shift, you can find distinct value to sell into those. But don't rely on wishful thinking and what you want your markets to be to define your current markets. You have to know where you're selling today before you can go forward. So now the second market, and these are the ones that give you a real tailwind for growth. These are the first place to look for additional opportunities, and I call them complementary markets. They're very low risk for growth because the value they want is linked to your current markets. You can leverage the credibility, the market value that you've created in your current customers and those who are buying from you to sell into these markets. You usually don't have to make a great investment. There's not a lot of change. You may need to refine your value or package differently, but these are the markets that you can find that you can immediately move into. Now, what are some options for complementary markets? 
helpful. One of the places I look immediately is what I call follower markets. Let's say that everybody else has chased after the early adopters in a market, but all of the followers behind it haven't moved into buying those products are still available. You may be able to go in and capture them. The market opportunity, the need for those buyers is already created by all the guys that were early into that market. And you may be able to go in and offer them a better service or solution. If you're servicing early adopters today, go look at the followers and see if there aren't ways to repackage your current value, distribute it in a different way, but pick up all the people who want to buy from you and are complimentary to those who buy from you today but just can't buy it the way you do it today. Another thing to look for is look for complementary products to your current product where you can go latch onto that market and sell what you have today as a bundle with that other successful seller or that other product and grow. These are your tailwinds for growth. So how do you identify your complementary markets? A, you want to find similar value requirements. These markets want the value you have today or a distinct value that you could provide with very little change. Expand your market profiles like I just talked. Instead of just looking at the earlier adopters and the guides that buy your product today based on the way you sell it today, look who you could pick up and follow our markets by using distribution, by packaging differently, by selling at a different price, by sh shifting the way you market. You may be leaving a lot of revenue on the table because you're not addressing those followers. Also, look for ways that you can sell complementary products. Now, I know I mentioned selling with a partner, but what about, let's take, for example, Quid C, who we mentioned in our value lesson, lesson number five. They started out selling diapers, but then they found complementary products to sell their buyer, who were moms, around Soap.com to be able to sell household cleaning supplies. And then they went even further and found a complementary product in a BeautyBar.com, which was personal fragrances and makeup and lotions to make mom feel better. That's a perfect example of complementary markets expanding revenue, profits, and growth. They are your best opportunity for short-term success. And usually, if you find the right complementary markets, you may not have to look any further. Now, emerging markets offer an opportunity for great, I mean, breakout velocity. Or you can crash and burn because they are very high risk. You have to be careful when you move into emerging markets. They have very unpredictable dynamics. You know, they may be coming up and they may take off really fast. Look at smartphones and how fast they took off. Or they may take off really slowly. Look at hybrid cars. They've been around for 10 years and yet they've really only taken off in the last few because of the gas prices. So you've really got to be careful with how much you invest in an emerging market. Your best options for emerging markets are when you find one that's close to your current trajectory or close to a complementary market and where you have very strong leverage for your value today, okay? So find opportunities for leverage. Leverage your value, your expertise, the successes in that market value you already have. Look, clo the closer they are to your current course, the better, all right? Because that means you don't have to invest a lot and shift a lot of what you're doing to go address them. And by the way, love those bluebirds. When a bluebird emerging market comes flying across your path and it's in sync, don't question it. Just capture it and love it. You will get value from it. And always, always, when you're entering an emerging market, look for ways to dip your toe in and test in that market while you continue to leverage your current markets, which I call cash cows. Don't just jump ship and go into that emerging market without testing. You always want to test. Now, the other two kinds of markets are what I call left and right field or 2020 markets. These markets require a major change in your course. And don't go after them except in very rare exceptions, and I'll tell you about those. They require different value, different expertise. Your market value today may not give you any credibility in these markets. They bring risk and distraction. They may be in high growth, or they may send you reeling. All right? Now, we all get distracted by left and right field markets because we see a shiny objects over there and we see a high growth market and we want to go after it. If it doesn't map to your value mix, then don't go after it. It will distract you. And we also get stuck in 2020. You know, times get hard and we get scared and we think, wow, that opportunity we passed by might be really great. Don't go there. We passed it by for a reason. The only time to shift into left and right field or 2020 markets is if you're in a downdraft in a spiral and you really need to recreate yourself. You have no other options left and it's time to restart. That's a good time to make that shift. So now for some summary lessons. 
First of all, I want you to take the distinct value that you identified in Lesson 5, and I want you to map it to the best market opportunities that you just identified in this Lesson 6. Now, that means make sure that your distinct value applies to each of those markets and that you understand the so what of your value mix in each of those markets. Then, create a business flight plan to focus on these specific areas. Don't try to go broader. Don't try to do through 60. Don't try to do everything. Focus on these areas for success. Third, I want you to make change an inherent part of your business culture because business leaders soar when they continuously and consciously adapt and keep up with their markets. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, create a plan for ongoing gravity checks. Play stump the chump once a month. Constantly ask questions. Question everything that you hold on to or you push against when it comes to believing about your business. Monitor your progress on your plan, not every quarter, every day. Look to see what could I do better? What could, what's not working? What needs to be tuned? Continuously tune for success. And above all, stay close to the keepers of the truth because your keepers of the truth will keep you on a path, a flight path to business success. We all can soar in any economy. You now have the tools. You've had the lessons. Go back and review these lessons often. If you want to, take our advanced course because that'll get you into even more details about how to do each of the things we've talked about in this beginner course in the very, very greatest details. But above all, here's what I want to tell you. You can get out there and soar to business success. Every economy brings opportunities for those who see them. You can now see them. You can defy gravity. So get out there and grow.